Kia ora, and welcome back to Sloan Ranger Studio. It's been a while, but I've been reading this big chonky book here, Night Lords Omnibus. Night Lords are awesome, I've decided, and I have been painting up a couple of my own because I just couldn't help myself. Uh, I, I thought originally I would like recreate the, the first claw that's in the book, but no, nah, I just kind of went with did my own thing. But I've got this Terminator model here today, and we're going to talk about how I paint my Night Lords armor. It's uh, a very deep, dark, moody blue, as as you know I like. Uh, but it's also got you know a little bit of little bit of life in it. It's not quite grim dark. Uh, it's still got its lightning bolts, of course, uh, and of course the the gold trim we all love. Um, so we'll be doing that gold trim first. I'm not going to make it that mistake again. Uh, this will be a two-part video, so we'll cover the armor and the trim in the first part, and then we'll come and polish up all the rest of the details in the second part. Um, you know, I just didn't want it to be too long because you know a lot of detail on these chaos marines so if you like my content please like and subscribe and if you feel like supporting me even more so i also have patreon um patreon's just if you feel like shouting me a coffee or a brush like i've said before all my content will always be free here on youtube uh patreon's just there if you feel like giving me an extra bit so thank you for watching let's get into it eh? <laughs> So here is the Terminator that we're going to be working with today. It's uh, got awesome big surfaces for us to show off this nice blue. Um, but, you know, it also has a lot of gold trim. Our favourite. So, um, gold trim, unfortunately, is uh, a necessary evil when it comes to painting Chaos Space Marines. So you got to get good at it. But uh, something I learned from doing the first little batch was uh, do the trim first. Uh, I made that mistake because I was just so eager to get into doing the blue armour. But do the gold trim first and then you can always just sort of tidy it up so it means that you don't have to be quite so meticulous when it comes to lining out those areas um so i've got some retributor armor here you know just the g-dub gold base paint um it's nice and nice and warm um i've thinned it down with a little bit of medium and what i'm going to do is just start painting it over all of these areas that we've got some trim and the cool thing is yeah it's thinned down so it flows on nice and easy but because we're doing it first we can always come back and touch up with the black later. And that's what I mean about doing it first, because you can be a little bit quicker with this process. So, I'm just going to go around and slap on gold all over all these areas of trim. You know, there is trim in abundance on this mini. So, take your time, go around, add that thin gold all over. It's probably going to take two coats to get a nice vibrant gold, um, but once you've done that, <laughs> the hard part is pretty much done. So I'll see you when that is done. All right, there's that gold trim done, and hey, what do you know? It's a Black Legion Terminator. Tricked you? No, anyway. So that's our black. Uh, that's our black. There's our gold trim done. So next thing we're going to do is give it a wash because this is like my favorite thing to do when it comes to metallics is give the metallics a wash it like dulls it down and just like fills in all the shadows for you all at once i love it everybody probably loves it uh so what i'm using here is basilicanum gray which is like a contrast paint but it's black well it's not really black it's like gray um so it doesn't like completely overtake the model but it does dull down our gold which is what we want for these night lords minis this is what i want anyway so just taking a, a healthy amount and I'm just like kind of painting it over, <laughs> painting it over all of the gold trim, kind of like just letting parts settle where they settle, you know. It takes a bit of control here, like I'm not just kind of like drowning it like I would like fur or something like that in a wash. So, you know, I'm like kind of picking out rivets and letting it sit around those a little bit more. And once we've done this step, then we can come back and do our cleanup. But this just kind of helps give it all some shape so we know which parts we we want to keep and whatnot so you go around and add a nice sort of healthy coat of this basilicanum gray and you can see what it does here you know it just gives us such a cool shadow um that might be a bit intense though so anyway yeah go around add in your little wash and uh, we'll come back for the next step all right, so we've let that dry, and uh, yeah, that looks really cool, right? You know, you can see how it settles in all the shadows and around the rivets really well. I think it's just a little bit stronger than like known oil or agrax or something. That's why I like it. it just kind of really exaggerates those shadows. But now everything's dry, so we can go back, clean up 
these areas around the trim when it comes to doing the uh, the blue armor so yeah you might think this is tedious but in my experience it's way easier than doing it in the reverse and um, you know trying to uh, do the trim after you've done the armor because you're just so nervous the whole time so this is um yeah this is this for me is a lot easier so yeah now you can just go around and clean up any parts that you've slipped and, uh, and then it looks tidy again yay cool so we've gone around and tidied up all of those um those bits that we slipped over um you know if you're anything like me there was lots of that <laughs> so that's all looking clean and tidy now which is what we want next thing to do is highlight this gold and so what i'm using for this is liberator gold which is just kind of a step up from retributor armor that gw makes um it's nice and kind of it's a bit it's a bit more of a silvery gold which is kind of what we want for this um we've still got a couple more steps to this gold yet um, we're going to be going back down um in the recesses one more time but for now let's bring it up a notch so we've got this liberator gold and i've thinned it down with a little bit of medium really don't want too much on your brush here so i'm taking the excess off and uh yeah what we're doing is we're just you know going around we're kind of giving it some edge highlights just making some some of the raised areas sparkle a bit more we're picking out these little corners so you know down here these edges are kind of like prime candidates for a bit of an edge highlight so do your best and I'm gonna go around those and you know, every now and then you know you might want to kind of like how you would if you were doing non-metallic um, just kind of see what I did here is I just like make that whole that whole kind of that whole surface quite reflective as if that's where a, a, a large chunk of the light is popping from so you know in, in places you can do a little bit of that but for the most part we're just stippling and pulling out little little edges and corners bringing some bring some light back into this gold so you can see you know that's starting to sparkle quite a bit more there Zero, just a little bit here yeah have fun with this and uh you know whenever you're using metallics make sure that you wash your brush quite quite frequently you know more frequently than you would if you're working with just a regular acrylic um because metallics are really good at ruining your brushes if you let them like dry in the bristles <laughs> so yeah make sure you clean your brushes but um you know go around and add a bit of polish to this gold with that liberator and uh we'll come back for the next step eh so when it comes to doing some of these parts i thought it would just be good to show you exactly how i do it so when it starts i just kind of pull out a couple of the big edges you know so in the case of sorry <laughs> so in the case of these shoulder guards you know i'm just uh pulling out these big main edges first tooth there this edge these rivets and you know if i was doing something to tabletop that would like that would be plenty you know that would pop it would look great on the table but I also just like to kind of add a little bit more of a kind of a, a curve to the curve to the the ref reflection so you know when it comes to like these top parts here it's gonna catch a lot more light than the side parts you know because the side parts are perpendicular so I'll just kind of like add a add a much bigger sparkle to these top parts and I'm just, you know, just a little combination of lines and dots to build up a texture. You know, when it comes to metallics, I think that, um, like a good speckled kind of surface looks really good. You know, it looks, it, it keeps that kind of a sparkly material when you, when you do it in this way. You know, if you were to just block in color, I think at a miniature scale, that would look fine but you know when we're zooming in and having a look at our miniatures up close it's good to see it's good to see texture so yeah I'm just picking out picking out edges and I'm not doing you know just big straight lines all the time sometimes it's just a couple little dashes 
couple of times I slip and then I just roll with it you know okay so now that's that's a big that's a big highlight now <laughs> but that looks fine you know we've still got a couple of steps yet so if we if we're not happy with it we can always come back I'm just gonna level that out a little bit so yeah that's that's what I'm doing I'm just kind of picking out little edges little little moments within the metal um, letting some parts shine brighter than others um, but we're coming back for another step where we'll be dulling down areas we want to be even darker so continue on with this step and we'll come back for that cool that gold trim is all blinged up now so I've gone around and um, you know added that liberator to all the steps there to all of the uh, the trim I should say our next thing we're going to do is exaggerate some of our shadows in some places because at the moment it's it's even you know like the gold is evenly highlighted and evenly shaded all over the miniature right so you know when we're when it comes to doing our armor panels as you'll see in the next step um you know this is going to look a little bit off because we're going to have quite a non-metallic appearance to the blue but if our gold trim is even then it's not going to look as convincing so what i'm using here is smoky ink um so we're going to be introducing a little bit more warmth into this gold now you know we've really really dulled it down and this would look awesome for maybe um you know black legion because this is looking really good against the black here but um for our night lords we want a little bit of warmth to contrast with our cool um blue armor so i've got this smoky ink i've got some on my palette and i'm just gonna thin it down ever so slightly it's quite a viscous boy i don't think i've ever used those two words together like that so apologies but anyway smoky ink thin down a little bit a little bit on our brush and so what we're gonna do is like maybe maybe this like this part of the sh of the um the boot here is gonna be far more in shadow than the rest and so we're just going to add that additional little bit of shadow into that area there you know you might want to do this a couple of times depending on how dark and dull you want it but yeah this smoky ink over the gold looks awesome so you might get addicted to it like i am right now and just want to put it everywhere but uh, it's also really good you know up underneath like these horns here you, know, you can just kind of exaggerate a little bit of shadow underneath those underneath this kind of knee guard part here and uh, yeah you can see you can see that color coming into the gold now and it's looking really nice um, other places you know the underside of these gauntlets here you know, they're not going to get much light so we can dull that gold down another step maybe maybe we want to like create a bit of a a curve here so you know off to the the sides or in the shadow and we're gonna have one highlight kind of running down the middle of his butt here so we'll just exaggerate the shadows over there maybe underneath this little part here it's certainly certainly these bits under the arms they don't need to be so bright and uh, you know on these shoulder panels the part that's the parts that are like perpendicular to the light like we were saying before we can just exaggerate the shadows on those because you know light sorry i'm saying perpendicular i'm saying it wrong it's parallel so if our light's coming from above it's going to reflect off the part that's most perpendicular right so which is the top part these parts that are parallel to the light direction are going to reflect as much so that's what i mean by that so they can have a bit more shadow in them so yeah, over here as well, up underneath this little impurity seal I've been making on my Night Lords. So yeah, these parts can have a little bit more shadow. And yeah, I'm just kind of glazing it, you know, I'm just kind of side of my brush, pushing it into the shadows. Building it up a couple of times. I'm just going to correct that little bit that I slipped there by just adding a little bit more shadow around that rivet. Yeah, so this is a this is a fun step, you know. It, it, it's bringing some form back into our gold and adding a adding a nice little warm tint to it. So go around, have some fun with it, add some more shadows, and uh, yeah, we'll come back for the last step of highlighting this trim. Neato. So we've gone and added in that smoky ink to all of our deepest darkest recesses, 
Um, and it's looking pretty cool. But last thing to do is to just give it one final little highlight. And, you know, these guys have been trudging around for 10,000 years. So it makes sense that their armor's a little bit battered and worn, right? So I'm going to just take a little bit of thinned down Runefang steel. You know, take any excess off my brush. And just on, like, the most extreme areas, like the very tips of these horns, I'm just going to add a little bit of this Runefang. You know. Some little nicks and stuff here and there. See some of these corners. And yeah, this is just gonna this is just gonna make everything pop that much more. So you know we've 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 gone for a second stage of dulling down. So things are things have gotten a little bit dry in edges, but yeah. So we're just adding a little bit more sparkle to this gold now. And uh, you know I think I think typically true metallic metal is perceived as um, you know like a, a shortcut option but I think if you're doing it properly it can look just as good as non-metallic and um, take just as long um, it doesn't help that these night lords well these chaos marines are just covered in so much um, you know quite delicate areas of metal so I've just done that little knee pad there or that shin guard I should say and you can see you can see how it really kind of elevates that metal quite a bit so go around and add some little little edges um, some corners to areas of the gold here you know maybe like these kind of top edges that are pointing upwards here um, certainly these like corners of this shoulder guard there um, yeah have some fun see you back for the armor finally well the blue armor I should say Yo, yo, so that gold trim's done, and that is looking cool. Nice and bright. Just what we want. So, next thing is where the fun begins. This is the blue armor, so the first thing I'm going to do is I've taken a little bit of Night Lord's blue, and if you didn't know this paint exists, neither did I, um, but I, I got it when I started this project of painting Night Lords for myself, um, and it's really cool. It's got, uh, you know, like a really sort of desaturated blue tone. Um, kind of magical. It's quite nice. Um, and it goes over black really nicely, so... I've got some Night Lord's blue and I've thinned it down. I'm taking, you know, I don't want too much. But then, um, oh, where's a good place here? This arm. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find where I want my kind of uh, highlight areas to be because we're going for quite a non metallic approach to this. Make it look like it's got quite a nighttime appearance. And so, I'm just pushing up all of this. Night Lord's blue into those into that that point so that curve of the hand there is like the perfect place for this and so same with this one here just push up some of this Night Lord's blue and, um, this is going to take a couple of coats and uh, of course, being careful around your lovely gold trim that you've just done. Yeah. Back here. Yeah, so just kind of finding those areas that's going to be brighter. You know, in this one here, for example, you know, we, we talked about how we wanted this to be a bit of a uh, kind of a, a cylinder when it comes to how it reacts with light and so yeah, pushing all of this blue into that area there when it comes to doing shoulders like this I like to draw a big old circle where I want my highlight to be so somewhere around there thank god for the reflections because this color this color is very dark so yeah, I just draw a circle to begin with, and you know, as we go, we'll glaze in the colors um, that we want. So, yep, this first step is quite dark. Uh, it's hard to show up on camera, but do it, do it a couple of times, and build up this blue because we've thinned it down and it's going over black. So, do it a couple of times, each one building up towards where we want our light source to be. Cool. So there is our Night Lord's blue all over there, and um, yeah, it's very dark, right? Which is awesome. I mean, if this was the aesthetic you were going for with your Night Lords, like, this would be a great, great blue to use. But, 
I want to go brighter. I want to make it look like, uh, you know, lightning's flashing across the sky and really lighting up some areas. So I'm moving up to the next blue, which is uh, Teclas Blue. Um, you know, you can see this is quite a jump, uh, but as we go through the process, you'll see how it comes together soon. So I've thinned it down, and in uh, very much the same way, we're going to go over these uh, areas that we've designated as our bright points. And, you know, you can see I'm just with just little dashes just pulling the paint and pushing the paint into where I want those highlight areas to be yeah it's quite loose yeah, we've got our circle up here making it a bit smaller this time little bits on the leg quite a narrow little beam of beam of lights coming down here so same thing as last time you know do this over a couple of coats and um, you know looking for looking for those little like kind of areas where we might be able to catch a, a nice little highlight so this part on the chest here is a good one and uh, I think this part on the on the hand here is already dry so you can see how you know when we do it a second time pulling that and that blow in it starts to starts to really pop so yeah so yeah that is our next step work your way around you know little dashes pulling it in or you know big dashes if that's how you prefer to do it uh, you know, you can use the edge of your brush, like on the back of these legs here, I've been using the edge of my brush to, to kind of glaze it in like that. But, you know, you can also do it like that to get a bit more of a, get more of a texture to it. Uh, it's up to you. But that is the next color, and that's what we're doing. We're just kind of building up a bit of a blend. with. Cool. So we've got ourselves a very... A uh, quick sketch of where our highlights are going to be now. You know, so we've done our layer of Night Lords now. Now we've got our layer of Teclas on there, and we've got a much clearer idea of where our light sources are. But it's still uh, it's still pretty loose. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a 50/50 mix of Night Lords and Teclas, maybe a little bit more Night Lords, maybe a 60/40 kind of thing. We're going to thin it down. So you can see how I've created my mixture here. That was Night Lords, I've just added um, Teclas into it. Maybe a bit more Teclas. Can't see, I'm just wigging it. Do I even know what I'm doing? Jeez. Anyway. So now we've got that mixture. And then over the transitions, so good example is over here. We're just going to glaze over the uh, the transition between the techless and the night lords and you know you can do this a couple of times like all the other steps this is just going to help make it appear a bit smoother you know I'm still like you know I'm not a very patient painter ironic right because this is like such a patience hobby <laughs> But like I'm not a very patient painter, so I only do this a couple of times, and I I just kind of run with the uh, with the texture, you know. Like I'm just, you can see here, I'm just kind of dancing around with my brush, I'm just you know moving from place to place, letting it dry. I might come back to it later, but you know I'm just kind of glazing over these transitions with this thinned paint here, and you know, it comes out quite cloudy, and I'm kind of into it, you know. It's not like a not like another. Like some other painters out there who would do this like a hundred times and have like the most flawless blend and it just looks so breathtaking. Nah, that's not me. I like to just, you know, I like to just paint. I like to just put paint on, see how it goes. If I like it, cool. I might do it again later. If I don't, eh, I've learned something. But yeah, this is just me. So I'm just going around and I'm just moving quick. 
just uh, glazing in this transition between the uh, the darker Night Lords and the Techless with our 50-50 mix. And uh, you'll see it's quite easy, right? Like I'm just, I'm not like, not being too particular with it, but it's still like doing a pretty good job of smoothing out. So you can imagine if you know you do this like a hundred times, yeah, things are gonna look pretty buttery. Anyway, this is what I'm done. Go around and do that over all your blends. Do it as many times as you want. Come back and you know, hey, maybe maybe you slipped and you it's like it's not feeling as bright as you wanted. Come back and add some more techless. But uh, that's the process. Have fun with it. Just move around, dance around, get that paint moving. Things are starting to look a little bit smoother now. We've got a couple more steps to go, but I'm having fun. I hope you are. Hell yeah. So, without even really trying, um, <laughs> you know, you, you saw how I was doing it. I was just kind of moving around real quick. Um, you know, we achieved a really smooth blend by just kind of creating that 50-50 glaze between the two colors. And I mean, that's a technique that you can take so far. You know, you could you could apply that to so much. You know, where you're, you're doing cloaks, you know, you're doing, you know, armor panels like this or whatever it happens to be. You know, there's so much um, use for that 50-50 glaze um, that just makes life so easy. Um, so the next step is just taking this blue up a notch. And we're going to repeat the process, basically. So just take a little bit of our next color, which is Lothurn Blue, uh, thin it down and... It's the same thing really, you know, we're just, but we're just taking up a much smaller surface area this time, you know, we're just, we're just making, making a real, real pop of blue now, you know, so a little circle with our little bits coming off it now, we wanted that to look a little bit more magical, so, you know, I'm just taking up a much smaller surface area and do this a couple of times because it's transparent so it's not gonna um, feel as intense um, this first round so you yeah, do it a couple of times and uh, you know certainly when it comes to the face this is our color that we're gonna be doing some edge highlighting with so you know there's like a couple of like really pronounced edges on these Terminator Terminator face plates so, you know you can be picking those out with this color as well because this is a this is the brightest blue that we're gonna be working with and, you know when it comes to these uh, little pipes and stuff like that you, know, you can drag it up and make them feel make them feel really uh, really spherical spherical cylindrical um, yeah yeah cool. push push a highlight up these tubes and they start to look pretty cool so yeah this is our last blue um, Push it up that push up that low thern, and then we'll come back for another 50-50 glaze to smooth that out again. Have fun. Cool. There is our layer of the low thern blue all over now. Get a good look at how that's looking. So of course, next step is to just create a 50-50 of the low thern and the uh, techless. Put a little bit more low thern in this this one. Something like this guy here. So thin it down like we did with the previous step. And then, you know, a little bit on our brush. We're just uh, brushing over that transition there. Being paler, this one will be a trickier one. You know, the presence of white always uh always makes our always makes our paint chalkier trickier to work with but yeah same process just glazing over the new area and remember if you're not happy with it just go down another notch you know just glaze in the techless on its own so this is the process now so Pretty much done with our blue after this, sorry. Pretty much done with our blue after this, so we're just going to polish this up. Get it to whatever kind of level you're happy with. And then we'll come in 
for those lightning bolts. Yo, all right, so there is our blue armor. You know, it's cleaned up. Yeah, it's good enough for me. I'm happy with it. So we've got one thing left to do, and that is the lightning bolts, of course. Um, and so I think when it comes to Night Lords, the lightning bolts are obviously pretty iconic, but you don't want to overdo them, and you kind of need to do them right. And so I've got a couple of pieces of advice when it comes to doing your lightning bolts, because obviously this comes down to, you know, how good you are at controlling the brush and keeping it steady, because it is very fine. Um, but the two pieces of advice I'd give you are don't do zigzags. I think zigzags uh, look pretty naff. Um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't feel uh, as convincing, unless of course you're going for a very cartoony look, in which case, do your thing. But I would say for the most part, avoid zigzags, you know, just back and forth lightning bolts. I think they look a little bit too simplistic for what we're going for here. And the other piece of advice, uh, <laughs> in contrast to that last piece of advice, is be as random as possible. And so, um, what I like to imagine when doing these lightning bolts is a drunk person trying to find beer at a supermarket you know so it's like back over here uh, yeah so you know it's it's as random as possible and so I'll show you what I what I mean by that on the shoulder pad here so hopefully you can sort of see and you know I just start here and you know it's over there and oh 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 a couple little jagged ones and I'm getting finer and finer as I go and then another drunk person kind of enters the supermarket and they they're looking over there and this person is looking over there so and you know you can build them up so you know at the top here they're a lot more bright and sorry for this I'm just using plain white just thin down and you know it's cool when the lightning bolts and a fork change their change their direction. So, you know this guy here, he he forked. And I decided to go over that way. Oops, I've got a bit of zigzag here, so you can see what I mean. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back over, and straighten that up, and fork it a little bit. Maybe the lightning bolts also coming in this direction and yeah I think he got there in the end and this one forked also so that's how I do my lightning bolts and you know these are a bit thick because I've just got a new brush but you know as thin as possible I think uh, is what works best and you know you can kind of have some little bits that kind of branch out but yeah as thin as possible and I wouldn't do it on every single armor panel you know pick some pick some iconic ones obviously these hands the shoulder and maybe one of the legs is a good place and probably his butt um, you know I wouldn't try and do it on every single little armor panel I think it'll you know look quite messy um, but yeah have fun with these lightning bolts and we'll uh, come back for the finished product eh? There he is, there's our final finished Night Lord's armor and gold trim and by golly that's looking pretty cool. I can't wait to put all the other colors on it actually like the red red cloth and we'll probably do a Blood Angels helmet because you know I've been reading those Aaron Dembski Bowden novels and they seem to have a bit of a rivalry with the uh, the Blood Angels so that'll be cool, a bit of red in there. But anyway that's him, hope that wasn't too tricky to follow, I hope those 50-50 uh, glazes treat you well. It's a uh, great technique, really easy, uh, I know you can do it, it's not that hard, and uh, yeah, it's it just it's kind of like cheat mode, you know, it's it's kind of like putting in some cheat codes into your painting, because it turns those blends so, so buttery, so quickly, um, and you know, like I said, you can just keep doing it, you know, you just keep on adding in glazes, keep on like making 50-50s of the 50-50s to get, you know, the most in-between tones and really push it to its absolute max there's some artists out here who do that and it looks great um but for me this is i'm happy with this because i've got a whole army of these to paint so this is a good level for me i'm happy with it it'll look great on the table looks great on video i hope hope you like it anyway and uh you know if you like my content please like and subscribe uh, share it around your mates who are painting night lords uh it's i think the night lords are a bit of a fan favorite eh? everybody loves them but anyway hope you like it 
And if you feel like supporting me, um, I, I do have Patreon. If you feel like uh, shouting me a coffee or a brush or even a mini now and then, you know, I love it. Thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, I'll see you next time for uh, part two. Probably take uh, a little siesta between them. Maybe we'll go back to doing a, a little Goat Trek video. Or maybe, you know, if you're really, really keen to see the extra details, we'll come back to this one as soon as possible. All right. See you then. Bye.